All right, we're right at 10 a.m. So let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for joining us for day two of the AAAF fall working meeting. Today, we're gonna to focus on demonstrating value with AAAF. Um, I just noticed the slide says the value with AAAF. Um, demonstrating value with AAAF, uh, starting with about 30 minutes of lightning talks today. And then we'll take a quick break for 30 minutes before moving into the main session of the day uh, that Sarah and Ben Brumfield will be hosting. They will give an initial presentation along with a set of panelists uh, before we break for 30 minutes and then have about an hour and a half of discussion and note taking, uh, looking at some solutions for some of the issues that have been raised by the panel. And then I just wanna point out that we have some affinity group sessions starting today. So from three to 3.30 PM, we'll have a group discussion for anyone who's interested in discussing use cases for AAAF 3D. And that will be on the same Zoom URL that we're on right now. Uh, so our lightning talks for today, I wanna to move into these quickly just so we have enough time. Uh, we're hearing from Nikki O'Neill about the Anonotate project, uh, Joe Padfield about a simple AAAF discovery, and finally, Anne Clamped about repurposing the manifest use cases with linking to canvases. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and take a look at those together. And then we'll take a quick break and move into the rest of the sessions for today. Just stop my sharing really quick. And okay, let me just reshare with the audio. All right, can everyone see uh, my screen with the video on it? Yep. Great, thanks. Hi, my name is Nikki. I will be presenting on Anonotate, which is an application I built to create annotations. Um, so Anonotate is displayed on the right. What Anonotate basically does is it creates annotations and writes those annotations to a GitHub repository enabled with GitHub pages, which basically means it creates a GitHub repository and then builds an entire website. Um, this is really nice because if Anonotate were to ever get um, sunsetted, uh, your annotations wouldn't have to get exported. They're already in something that you already own and the website is always gonna stay there as long as you keep it. Um, Additionally, you can create uh, more repositories within the application. Uh, they're set up as what we call workspaces. If you go into the profile settings, which is in the upper right hand corner, you can actually create more workspaces and switch between those workspaces. Um, additionally, you can create custom Anona views. Anona is an application I built um, that actually allows you to display web annotations in a uh, multitude of viewers. So you can actually create multiple views um, within this application and then save them to a permanent web address. Uh, additionally, you can create curated collections of annotations. So if you wanna mix and match those annotations you've created and have them displayed, you can do that as well. You can also collaborate with other users. All you need is a GitHub username. And again, in that profile setting in the upper right hand corner, uh, you can go ahead and click on it and invite people to work in uh, your workspace with you. Uh, additionally, you can upload images. It can be integrated with Wax, which is a uh, collection framework um, that I don't really have time to go into, but for those of you familiar with it, it can be, um, you can tie your Wax repository to an annotate. Uh, additionally, all these annotations are searchable using the search interface in the menu. Uh, additionally, we've added some new features. Uh, so uh, specifically, we've made this work on mobile. So in order to create an annotation, and this is built into the application we're using to create annotations called Annotorious, what you do is you hit the shift key and then use your mouse to drag and create uh, the shape of your annotation. 
This obviously doesn't work on mobile. So what we've done is create a button that enables and disables the ability to create annotations and then you just drag and create that annotation on mobile. Additionally, we've added the ability to create a default workspace. So previously, uh, when you logged in, whatever your alphabetically first workspace was would be the one that gets enabled. Um, now you can actually define which workspace you want to be enabled on login. <laughs> Additionally, we've refactored upload so that any uploaded images um, get converted to a IIIF image with a version 3 manifest. Uh, we've also created the ability to create a copy of a manifest. So basically you put the URL into the form, submit it, and it will create a copy of that manifest on your website. Um, this was really important because we have integrated the functionality that any annotation lists that get written um, get written to any uploaded manifest. So if you have uploaded any manifest into your repository, those annotation lists automatically get written onto those manifests. Uh, additionally, we've added the ability to upload a vocabulary for tags, um, which includes a URI support. So basically, uh, you can tie controlled vocabularies uh, to a vocab. Um, additionally, we've allowed for a temp username setup, which is just a setting that you have to enable. And then um, if you're using a shared account, uh, you have to put in that username or that user that you want to show up um, because when annotations get written, they automatically grab your GitHub username and include that into um, the annotation. So you have um, who owns that annotation basically. And additionally, we've added some more annotation shapes. Um, so basically it used to be rectangle, and polygon, now I believe it's circle, freehand, and I can't remember the third shape. Uh, additionally, we've used this in two classes, um, both in our visualization studio, which has a 360 degree view screen. Uh, one class we used it was a graduate seminar on Vikings. They had a scavenger hunt for a list of images, um, so things like Falcon to find on the Bayou Tapestry. And what they did was we had a large visual of the Bayou on the screen, and then they had iPads where they could uh, get a better view of um, the sections they were looking at on the screen and annotate those. Um, Additionally, they were able to find specific types. Uh, the second activity was to find specific types of scenes and transitions on the bayou, and then they ended up presenting. So we we showed uh, the, the annotation list that got created in the session uh, using Anona on that 360 degree view screen. And then they stood up and presented, um, which allowed them to basically already have those shapes um, displayed on the screen so they didn't have to do it themselves. Uh, additionally, we've used it in an undergraduate honors English class um, where the students logged in on their own devices and annotated dialogue for their rival by Sean Tan, which is a comic book without dialogue. And then they ended up again presenting on the screen uh, what they were thinking and their thought process behind their dialogue. And we used Anona again to display uh, that annotation list that got created in that session. Um, this is my contact information and links. Please feel free to contact me with any questions you might have. Thank you. All right, um, so let's move on to our second talk, uh, Simple IIIF Discovery. Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Joe Padfield. I'm one of the principal scientists working at the National Gallery in London. And today I'm going to be talking about the simple IIIF discovery system. IIIF, as most of you will probably know, can help provide open access to a wealth of images from institutions across the world, all using the same free shared tools and services. The IIIF Consortium even put together a great list of these institutions showing how to find the published IIIF resources on each of their web pages. Several institutions even provide access to well-documented APIs to allow more complex searches of their collection and image information. 
Now, more advanced APIs and website-based searches are often very important for knowledgeable researchers, but it can still be a little tricky and time-consuming to explore large numbers of pages to find all of these IFFF resources. They can also be difficult for more general users or people who are new to an institution's collection. The development of a simple IFFF discovery system was carried out to demonstrate an easier or alternative way to discover and present IFFF content from individual institutions or across multiple collections at the same time. This work was supported by three ongoing research projects, a practical IIIF project funded by AHRC and the Shock and Iperion HS projects, both funded by the EU Horizon 2020 programme. Here is a link to the live simple F IIIF discovery system and it will be repeated on several slides. Now, instead of being presented with complex search forms or having to go through multiple pages of documentation for an API, users are presented with a simple text search form and allowed to ask the question, find me all objects related to a simple keyword. Uh, users can add the term, uh, select the number of uh, results limited per page and even select the page number they want to visit. Uh, they can also uh, select the default image viewer, OpenSea Dragon or Mirador. The system will automatically search any connected APIs for objects matching the given search term. They will then filter the results for objects with, a, with associated IFFF resources, organize these resources and display them directly within the IFFF viewer. Now, here's the landing page for the example triple, uh, National Gallery uh, endpoint. And we're going to run a test search for the word C. This returns 155 matching objects from the National Gallery collection, and the page is displaying uh, images related to the first 25 of them. Now, this being uh, OpenSea Dragon and IIIF, you can obviously zoom right in and explore all of the content as you wish. Here you can see the signature of Claude Monet on this particular painting. Now, searching across one collection is great. Uh, the system will also allow you the option to search across multiple collections. At this time, there are six collections connected to the system. The Art Institute of Chicago, the National Gallery, the National Gallery of Art Washington, the Smithsonian, the V&A and Welcome Collections. And the same search options can be provided to explore all of them at the same time. And here are the results for C, the same search we did before in the National Gallery collection. And here, instead of 150 odd objects, we have 91,671 objects. Now, OpenSea Dragon provides a great way of exploring a large set of zooming images. Mirador provides a more complex feature rich experience with images directly linked to rich metadata and descriptions provided, each, provided by each institution. So, depending on a user's needs, they could toggle between the image centered view or the view presenting more rich metadata as required and toggle backwards and forwards. Now, so if we go back to the search results for uh, in OpenSea Dragon, we can then click on the Mirador uh, icon and we're dropped straight into the Mirador viewer. And we can scroll down and find the same painting by Moni that we were looking at before and then access all of the rich metadata associated with these paintings, links back to collections, the painting descriptions or uh, links to IFFF manifests and so on. Now, it being Mirador, you can obviously go back to your search results and select other paintings and compare them with the first painting or other paintings you've already selected and zoom in and explore. Now you can then jump back to OpenSea Dragon, as I said, and toggle back and forward and as required. The other thing to highlight is the information button. Uh, this brings up a pop-up which will display the number of objects that are returned per uh, endpoint, per institution, because when you're running searches across multiple collections, sometimes most of your results may be coming from a single collection, depending on the terms that are being used in the search. Now, the system works by creating an endpoint, uh, which acts almost as middleware between the viewer, the presentation and each of the APIs. So this endpoint is generated automatically from a simple configuration file, along with the search pages and data presentation. The endpoints convert the simple keyword search into a complex API call and then reformats the results as they come back. The endpoints do not need to know uh, how the API is, is managed uh, or how the specific data structures or ontologies uh, are used. It just needs to know how to pull out and find the IFFF resources based on the results. More detail of the technological details here are provided on the project website. Now, moving forward, 
the next steps for the project, we're hoping to add in further collections. Uh, we're also wanting to look at connecting in Sparkle endpoints uh, using caching information in Elasticsearch, making use of uh, some outputs from the Heritage Connector project. We were hoping to explore some multilingual options for search terms and potentially develop the UI a bit more to deal with complex sets of data from heritage science, art history or object examinations. The whole system is based on the simple site uh, framework, which is available on GitHub. The code for the simple IIIF discovery system has also been uploaded for GitHub and has also been archived on Zenodo for referencing. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, um, and on to our final talk for the day, uh, repurposing the manifest. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, today, I would like to bring um, your attention to um, a simple use case, and that is to link directly to the Canvas ID. This is a use case um, which is from the Academic Research in Digital Art History. And to my mind, digital art history and in a broader view, digital humanities and their current interest in enriching research data might be really an important audience to be addressed by you, the IIIF community. So as said, um, a simple thing just to link directly to the canvas. So why is this interesting for me and um, what did we uh, what, what kind of challenges did we face when we tried this out? Well, at the DFK Paris, I'm working currently on a project on data curation that aims to repurpose existing research data. And my case study, or you might say my sample data, um, is the data collection Deutsch-Französische Kunstvermittlung 1870 bis 1960. Um, the data collection really goes back to the early days of the DFK Paris in 2002-2003. This collection comprises um, structured notes that they're taken by three groups of researchers while reading systematically um, 300, 302 art periodicals from the period at stake. These notes were taken um, or collected in a database with approximately 6,700 entries referring to articles in use in those journals. Today, um, many of the periodicals are digitized, and this is especially the case for, of those or for those which are of importance for the research project. So this is really good luck. Nearly half of all the records in the database are referring to periodicals which are offered as IIIF manifests by the BNF, Bibliothèque Nationale de la France, and the Heidelberg University Library. So it was our idea to embed a IIIF viewer in our future website, and here the user will find the volume opened at the very page of interest and ready to be flipped through. So this is really a IIIF thing. So we started um, to work on this and manually traced 2,541 Canvas IDs. In the meantime, we deployed three instances of different IIIF viewer for prototyping our new website and um, um, looking how it all works out. Well, it worked out fine, but we have to take care of three major challenges I would like to address briefly. Uh, first of all, we had to face that from free viewer we tested, only Mirador allowed to start directly from the canvas. For the universal viewer and TV, Moritz Shep from Vendik IO did some hacking. So this is our developer. From my opinion, the further development of viewer should address the needs of those who don't host own manifests and don't host or annotations or like to work with annotations, but just draw from parts the canvases of existing manifests. I think this is really important. Uh, challenge number two, um, 
Quite naively, I have to say, I thought that the manifests are somehow persistent and so that the link to a canvas is more or less forever. Well, it turned out that this is not the case, as we learned two weeks ago when looking at our prototype for preparing this presentation you are attending right now. At some point um, in 2021, the BNF um, seems to change um, the syntax of the canvas, so our links are for the moment broken. Uh, we don't think that this is a um, great work to repair, but um, for sure this is nothing um, we, can, we can think about easy um, in a future prospect. And thirdly, uh, within our data curation project, they are working on describing our data machine readable. Um, so therefore, we try to use the linked art data model. Um, this is interesting for us, but for the moment, you cannot properly refer to a canvas, like saying it is subject of, um, the item is subject of a canvas, but only um, the item is subject of a manifest. So, um, these are um, the three challenges we uh, faced and we would be very happy about your feedback and your commentaries and Moritz Schepp and I um, planned to be um, online right now, so um, welcome and thank you for your attention. Bye bye. Great, so that is it for our lightning talks for today. Um, we do have a break now um, and we will be coming back at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern time. So in about uh, 38 minutes to begin our session about demonstrating value with IIIF. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. Uh, thanks all for joining us this morning and see you back here soon.